So today's first example is going to be an automotive example. And I love this exact workflow. Um, and on this type of application, a lot of times it's an arm that's used. That's just what I tend to see. You can use handheld devices. I see that sometimes. But the arm just tends to be the one of the ones that ends up being used for this type of application. And this application is exhaust. And you see here with this one, what we have here is an automotive application where many types of manufacturers make different models and people love certain models and they want to modify those and uh, create aftermarket parts. And this is where this comes in really handy that you see um, you can take the parts out and that's what this example is using you can take the exhaust out that's currently there scan the entire area uh, for clearances and mounting points and then you don't even need to reverse engineer the object that was there you design your own that has the proper clearances and creates uh, the proper mounts up to the existing structures that are there so this is a really good application for scanning and reverse engineering where it's not your traditional scan the part itself, reverse the part itself and create it. We're scanning the assembly of the surrounding area. So with that, let's go ahead and jump over to this application and I'll pull up Design X right now. So here you have the scan data and with this scan data, really, you see that we got scan data all over. And this tends to happen with automotive applications where you're really just uh, scanning for specific locations of things, right? You're just scanning the exterior area. You see here all of this, anything that you need for clearance purposes. So you see, this is what we've done. We've scanned and this is the final step. So we'll go ahead and roll back through the history and show it. So with that, let's go ahead and roll back. So here's our scan data and we'll go ahead and toggle this on and off as we go through it. But um, let's start off with rolling forward. I think these few first steps yeah, um, let me just turn the sketches on. Are the sketches for alignment purposes? So those things you can use sketches for alignment, and uh, one of these days I will add that to the list of things to talk about um, on how we do those sorts of alignments. I know that um, I've covered them in a few different types of videos, but it's helpful to to bring it up here as well and different kinds of alignments inside of Design X. So we went ahead and you'll see this is the first sketch that we actually are going to use here where he goes ahead and creates the flange and draws the flange um, on that data. So you can see, so it does help for me. I tend to do it this way as well. Define your start and end points of where you're starting from and to and from, and then rough it all in as you go here. Um, so what they did here is they used the coordinate system. We're squared up to the world. And we'll just turn the mesh off and show these sketches here. And from the side, they went ahead and just found the angles that they wanted from the side. You know this is a compound angle. This is not just in one direction or another direction. Uh, but they're going to utilize all of this construction geometry to define where it is that they want to draw stuff here. So you see, now we went ahead and created a sketch for this trajectory coming off of that flange. And then we create these construction entities to follow the line of where we're looking to go here. And we will roll forward. 
and we'll just turn the scan data on. So you see we're just roughing in all kinds of uh, geometry to help us define where we want to go and for clearances here. And you see now on the other side, we went ahead in and roughed in where we're going to end up and then draw a sketch here. To create that. So now we'll just roll forward. And now you see that we have, we'll just turn the scan data off. Based on all of these sketches, we've roughed in all the way through the trajectory of drawing these sketches to create our path of where we need to go here. And then after we do that, we go ahead and we did an extrude there, a loft neck down for the uh, pipe tip there, and then go ahead and create your sections here. Go ahead and extrude all of that. And you see here there's an extra adapter, a weld section, I believe, for the flange. And then sweep this and create that pipe. And then go ahead and sew it together and thicken it. And there we go. We have our we have our uh, full run here all the way out. So we're able to use that scan data and design directly off of it. Now there's a different, there's a bunch of different ways of going about it, but this is one method, and I wanted to show this style here as an application. So this is a relatively quick one, but it does show a really powerful set of functionality. And to note some of the distinctives of this workflow is. This one was done with 2D sketches and then referencing the 2D sketches to each other, right? So for here, creating a 2D sketch that's from point, 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 and drawing this here as a sketch along this, this axis right here on this plane, and then drawing that as one section, and then doing this all on a second plane so that was done in 2d sketches as well and drawing these together it's it's actually old-fashioned 3d sketching is the way i would say it where you use a bunch of 2d sketches and connect them together making the endpoints coincident and all that but that helps lay out um using 2d sketches how you can lay out a pipe project and then transfer this over to CAD and you're up and running.